Hello and welcome back to this video on the Hindley Milner type inference system. Uh, today we're going to look at algorithm M. We previously looked at all kind of the stuff up to this point in terms of what are all the helper functions, how do we actually implement them in TypeScript, and we've also looked at algorithm W as well as looked at kind of how we read this algorithm M. So if you haven't seen those videos, have a look at them before. Uh, so just to remind you, this is kind of where we got to with algorithm W. I put it in a new file. I haven't done anything else except move it over here. Um, and now we're going to do the same for algorithm M. So in this case, the uh, signature is a bit different. So actually, interestingly, we don't have a return type of an expression. We actually just pass one in uh, at the beginning. Uh, sorry, we don't have a return type of a type. Uh, we actually just pass one in at the beginning. Uh, and so in this case, well, we can write that, uh, but you might be wondering like, well, how do we actually get the type at the end? Uh, and well, we use the substitution on the type we passed in at the beginning, and that should tell us uh, what the type is. And you'll see what I mean by that uh, in a minute. So uh, in this case, we're gonna take a typing environment, uh, we're going to take an expression, uh, which is the one we're going to find out the type of, uh, and we're going to take a type, uh, which we'll call model type, uh, and that's all going to return us a substitution. There we go. Um, that looks good. And now uh, we can implement the different cases. Um, I'm also going to implement the kind of thing that we use to convert this substitution plus the expression we type passed in. Sorry, the type we passed in at the beginning uh, to a type uh, at the end as well. I'll show you that. Um, so as before, a lot of this is basically just pattern matching on the different things. So for uh, variable expressions, abstractions, applications, and let-in bindings. Uh, so I'm going to copy that from algorithm W uh, because this is all kind of going to be the same. Uh, and I'll just clear out the uh, actual content. Uh, I mean, it doesn't take too long to write. Uh, but there we go. We have this, right? So we have our var, abs, app, let, expressions, and then we just have an error case where it's something else, uh, which it should never get to, but uh, just in case. And so let's look at the first one. Uh, well, here where we have a variable expression, what we're going to do is we're going to unify this thing. We saw a similar thing in algorithm W. And what this means is we're going to fetch it out of our context or our typing environment here uh, for the value of x. Uh, we're going to find that, and then we're going to instantiate it with new type variables beta. And in this case, we're going to unify it with the type we passed in uh, row. So actually in W, we had basically the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to copy that over actually. So first we're going to get it out of our typing environment or context. So we're going to get, get the value, check it actually exists and otherwise throw an error. Um, and then what we're going to do is return this kind of unification substitution. So unify um, our input type. So this type corresponds to row here. So you know, type environment gamma, expr x and type row here. Um, so we're going to unify uh, that type with the instantiated value. Great, so that one's done. Function abstraction looks a bit like this. So we're going to get a substitution one, uh, which is going to be equal to, uh, well, first, actually, we're going to have to create these new type variables, beta one and beta two. So let's do that first. Beta one is a new type variable. Beta two is a new type variable, just like that. And then our substitution one is if we unify, that's the squiggly u again, uh, we're going to unify row, which is our type, and this type here, which is going to be the uh, function type beta one to beta two. So uh, if you remember how we do that, we do a type function application uh, of the function type, uh, and our kind of arguments into that are going to be beta one and beta two. That looks good. So there's going to be unified and give us a substitution s one, which uh, kind of unify those two. Um, and then our substitution s2 is going to be calling uh, m uh, on all of this, right? So uh, that is s1 applied to our context, our type end. Um, and here we're adding this thing to the, to the context. So we're going to have to do the same thing we did for algorithm w, which was we make a new context, which is kind of everything that was in uh, the typing environment before with that substitution applied, um, plus our x. So that was x per x. Uh, should have type s1 applied to beta1. Um, and the type we're going to, sorry, the expression we're going to pass in is now this expression e. x per e. Uh, and then uh, finally, the expected type we should get is s1 applied to beta2. Uh, why is that? I think I've messed up. Oh, there we go. I've just messed up the bracketing. There we go. Uh, I might just fix the formatting on that just to make it a little bit easier to read, like so. Great. Uh, so that's calling m on the type environment plus the x, the expression e, and the s1. Cool. And then the last step, we're just going to combine those. So we're going to return s2 and s1 combined. Brilliant. 
Um, I remember the kind of logic that we're going through here is we are just kind of creating a new function beta one to beta two and say that should match with the input type. So the input type, well, we said it was a, a we're defining a new function. So the input type for like whatever the, the function should be as a whole, um, what we're expecting it to be, because that's what we pass in as a top-down algorithm. Um, we expect it to be a function, so it should be able to unify with kind of an, a generic function type, because these are both new types. Uh, and then inside the function, uh, what the kind of in, innards of the function are, this uh, expression e should match up with um, the type of beta two, which is basically like the return value of this function, right? Because it's from beta one to beta two, so the return value should be beta two. Um, and also x, which is our kind of like, you know, the uh, parameter in here, that should have type beta one. If like x has type beta one, then you know the, that's when the expression, the body should return uh, beta two. Great. Uh, so that would make sense. And then our function application, uh, again, is very similar. So we've got have uh, S1 is going to be, well, beta is going to be new type variable. And then S1 is going to be algorithm M applied for our typing environment, uh, our E1, and then this uh, new type here, which is going to be a type function application, which is going to be a function. Um, and the arguments are going to be uh, this beta and the input type row, uh, which we're calling type. Cool. And so again, this, this logic is basically that this argument here, it should be the function that's accepting this E2. So beta should basically be the type for E2. And so we're saying it should be beta and that should be returning the overall type that we expected to be that we're passing in as row. Um, and then also here beta, like that's what we're checking should match with E2 uh, as the second part. So uh, let's finish with that. So the second part, we are checking in same uh, typing environment. Uh, including that substitution, so we're combining those those constraints. Um, I always spell that wrong because they've done tip end instead of type end. Um, so we're going to check e2, um, and then we are going to check it against s1 applied to beta, and then finally we're going to return the kind of combined substitution of those two, so s2 applied to s1. And last we've got let, so uh, let x equals e1 in e2, uh, what are we doing there? Well, here we have to do some generalization, that's this clause function. Uh, before we get there, we're going to have another new type variable, uh, beta, and then we're going to say s1 is equal to our, uh, algorithm m applied to our typing environment, uh, our e1, and our beta. Great, whoops. Um, and then the S2 part is, again, algorithm M. This time, uh, we've got to do this similar thing where we were going to make a new context. Yeah. Make a new context um, where we've got S1 applied to the old context. So we've got everything in the old context uh, with that substitution applied. Plus, we've now got an additional uh, binding for our X kind of variable. Uh, which is going to be the generalized version. So that's this clause function. And you can see of substitution one applied to lambda is going to be our context. Um, sorry, substitution one applied to gamma is going to be our context. So that's uh, substitution one and type end. Um, and then uh, it's going to be applied to substitution one on beta uh, is going to be what the type that we're generalizing is. Good, that looks good. Um, and then we'll pass in the other arguments to our algorithm M function, which is our E2 and S1 applied to our row uh, type. Great. Um, and finally, we're going to return the combined type S1, S2. So that looks good. Um, and so if we go back to our kind of uh, original thing, we can uh, close that off now. Uh, we can see algorithm W is still working uh, as we expect, I think, here. But if we swap this out to M, like so, um, it's going to throw up a lot of errors because we can't use M like this, right? It had a different type signature. This one is expecting a context and expression. This one's expecting a type, context, expression, and a type. So in this case, uh, we're going to start by kind of creating a new type. So let's say we have our uh, type. We're going to make a new type. What do we call it? New type var. Okay. Uh, so this might be like T0 or something. And we're going to pass in uh, this thing to our... RM, sorry. So I'm going to pass in the expected type, which is just T0, remember, which doesn't have any constraints on it whatsoever. So it could be anything. So it, it will return a substitution that will map this T0 to, to anything because we have um, taken property one out of the substitution. So what we're getting is a substitution back rather than uh, a uh, pair of things. 
So we get a substitution that looks like this, uh, which is exactly as we expect. We've got this T0 that maps to kind of our value, which is in. And we also get other types that we see along the way. They're actually irrelevant to us, but uh, I kind of, I don't know, need to, need to see that, you know, that's how it works internally. So what we could do here uh, is we could then take this kind of uh, type to get the value out. So we could do raw and then that uh, type variable A, right? Um, hopefully that makes sense. Basically, if uh, that's unclear, we're doing M. Uh, so we get we get some result substitution uh, by calling m, and then we have our context expression and type. This type is a new type variable, and then to get our type back like out, uh, so our final type, uh, which we uh, monotype, will be um, our result substitution applied to uh, our type like that. Uh, so actually, this can even be simpler. Just apply it to our type like that. Um, that's basically what we're doing. Cool. So let's save. Uh, give it a second. There we go. So it's managed to determine. Yeah. Uh, plus one is has type int to int. Again, if we did something like um, true, it should know that is a boolean. And if we do uh, not true, that should still be a boolean. And if we did uh, one, it should know that's an integer. And odd one, uh, which you know we're saying odd is this function that takes integers to bool, so maybe it tells you whether it's odd or not. Uh, it knows that's a bool, etc. Um, and we can do all the good things like uh, defining our own functions and things like that uh, with algorithm M. Exactly the same. I think there's some proof uh, that basically says it's it's the same as algorithm W, uh, but sometimes the type errors it will give you will be slightly different uh, because it's a top down rather than bottom up algorithm. And what I mean by top down rather than bottom up is so in algorithm W is bottom up. And that if you imagine this is almost like a tree traversal or a graph traversal of your um, expression, what this does is it largely in all the ones that kind of are building blocks of others, like basically all of them apart from var, it basically just defers down and keeps asking you to like go down to, to var. Um, the only case where that's like uh, not true is application where it actually does some unification. Uh, and so the two places where you're going to get errors are here in the var type or here in the application type where it's either going right down to the bottom and finding it doesn't work there, or it's somewhere in the middle where it's trying to glue these types up in applications and it's finding they they don't align, they don't glue up with that unification there. So we're kind of going as far down the tree as, as possible um, and then, then finding errors there. Um, and we're like searching down the tree, figuring out the type at the bottom and building our types up uh, and combining them, right? Uh, so we're like doing all this combining of, uh, of types and, and building up a tree of types. Whereas M is kind of the opposite where we're pushing down a tree of constraints and seeing where it breaks. And along the way, we're going to pick up more constraints and build on that like set of constraints. And eventually we'll have enough constraints to tell you what the final type is. Uh, but that's why it's called top down. So you can see from the top, we're pushing down a type. We've already got a constraint on this type. Initially, it might not really have a constraint, right? We're just saying it's some type variable. It could be anything. Uh, but as it kind of progresses, for example, as it pushes down, uh, you'll eventually expect that it should be a certain type. So for example, where we had, um, let's say odd one. What it's doing here is it reads odd and it says, well, okay, I've read odd and I'm expecting uh, that odd has a type of integer to bool. So I'm expecting the return type should already be Boolean uh, and I'm expecting the next thing should be an integer. So I should expect that that's an integer. So if we go in here and we actually add, say, some logs, um, we can say uh, log uh, variable uh, expert and then the name uh, expected to have type uh, and then the let, let's uh, oh, I'll do string of five that type there we go let's try that um, so you can see as we kind of get to this one variable this one variable we expect it to already have the type integer right so we already know it has the type integer and also this variable odd because we know it's a application right so we know it's the first part of the application here uh, we are already expecting it to have this type uh, of a type function here. So we don't know what the type is. That's why it's beta, this new type variable. We should have a type of a function here. So we know when we are looking at odd, we expect it already has a type of a, of a function here. It doesn't know what they are. It's a T1 to a T0, so basically anything to an anything, but it should have some kind of type going on here. And then also when we get to one, we know it should have type integer. And then, you know, if it doesn't have type integer, so for example, if we had um, true here, uh, we'll see that's when an error gets thrown. So in this case, if we have odd true here, 
uh, it throws an error, could not unify types, uh, different type of functions, int and bool, right? Because this thing is expecting an integer and it got a bool. But also if you look at the uh, logs, well, we saw odd uh, was expecting a function and it got a function that was fine. And then we got to true, it was expecting an integer, uh, but it didn't get that, so it broke. Whereas in algorithm W, if we go back to our algorithm W, uh, we need to tweak the uh, things a little bit here. So we get the, is that the type? I think that might be the type. Um, so we still get a crash because it's still not unifying. Uh, but in this case, we see uh, it's it's because when we try and unify here, uh, we're unifying at this point and we're getting an error here. So what we're trying to unify is we just got into bool um, and now we are trying to unify, um, what are we unifying? T2 and beta. So we're, in, we're taking this input type uh, from what where we got the uh, kind of body of the function, this... Uh, not this body, the the argument. Uh, and now we're trying to match up with bool to like question marks or whatever, because you've got this beta, which could be any type, like a new type. But we're saying into bool don't match. So that's why we get this into bool message rather than the other one. So you can see how like we figured out the types for the two things separately, and now we're trying to combine them rather than we figured out the types so far, and now we're trying to push them down and impose those constraints on others. And that's like just a different ways of doing doing error checking. So hopefully this has been uh, valuable for understanding the kind of differences between these algorithms, seeing it implemented in uh, TypeScript, uh, hopefully, you know, gives you more practical kind of understanding of what these algorithms look like, how they work, and you can go around, play with them, try deleting things and see what breaks, try adding things and see what extra you can do. Uh, maybe you can add different constructs to the language, uh, whatever you want, or if you want to just dig around, try a lot of different examples, uh, go for it. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the final video where we can do a little recap of the series. Uh, cheers.